Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Good afternoon, everyone. I want to welcome you to the Franklin Church of Christ and our Sunday afternoon worship service. We sure are glad that you are with us and pray that the service will be a great edification for you today. If you need to get a hold of us or want to get a hold of us, you can reach us at facebook.com forward slash Franklin Church of Christ TN or visit our website at franklinchurchofchrist.com and go to the contact page. We'd love to hear from you. Well, enjoy and have a blessed worship service today. Lord of hosts, creator of the universe and all that it contains, and sustainer of life, we give thanks to you for this day of worship. May our worship be acceptable in your sight. We give praise, honor, and glory to you, and stand in awe of your magnificent works. Father, included in those magnificent works, is your plan of salvation for mankind. It is with thankful hearts that your Son sacrificed his life for ours. May we always live in obedience to you for that sacrifice. It is through your Son's name that we pray. Amen. Holy, holy,
sky and sea. As we prepare to partake of the Lord's Supper today, I want to focus on the beautiful words of a hymn. When my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to the Garden of Gethsemane. There I walk in the, mid the shades while the lingering twilight fades. See that suffering friendless one, weeping, praying there alone. When my love for man grows weak, when for stronger faith I seek, hill of Calvary I go to my scenes of fear and woe. There behold his agony, suffered on the bitter tree. See his anguish, see his faith, love triumphant still in death. Then to life turn again, bring all the worth of pain, bearing all the might that lies in a full self-sacrifice. As we partake today, let us remember the words of 1 John 4.19. We love him because he first loved us. Let us pray for the bread. Father, I thank you for sending your son to this earth to die on our behalf. As we partake of the bread, let us do so with reverence and a joyful heart. Amen. Let us pray for the Jews. Father, we continue our thanks to you for allowing your son to spill his blood to wash away our sins. As we partake of this cup, the fruit of the vine, let us never forget that great sacrifice. Amen. Creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing, Alleluia, Alleluia. The burning sun with golden beam, the silver moon with softer gleam. Tender heart, forgiving 
others take your part. Alleluia, alleluia. Ye who long pain and sorrow bear, praise God and on Him cast your care. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, from the New King James Version. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Good afternoon, family. My name is Zachary Ford, and I'm here with you from the Franklin Church of Christ here in Franklin, Tennessee. Family, I want to give you a little reminder. Every Sunday at 12 o'clock, we are actually airing our Wednesday night summer series. All right. What does that mean? We've actually been having guest speakers come from just about all over, and they're coming to speak on Homer Haley's book, which is entitled Prayer and Providence. So the first half of the book talks about prayer, all types of de things dealing with prayer, and all the speakers have done a great job talking about prayer. And then now we're in the second half of the book as the summer is kind of winding down, talking about the providence of God. The speakers have done a great job so far, and I continue to anticipate uh, the lessons just getting better and better. So if you would like to watch and participate, 12 o'clock on Sundays, right here on my TV 30. And then also we're still at two o'clock with our Sunday service, for you guys, which is what you're watching now. With all that out the way, family, thank you once again for tuning in. If you're with us, you should be down in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I want you to go to about verse 10, because we're going to be from 10 really down to about hmm, 18, beginning of chapter 7. You could follow this whole theory, or you could follow this thought all the way into the beginning of chapter 8 in 2 Corinthians, or yes, 2 Corinthians. What I'd like to do today is to point out, you know, as we've been discussing unity, we've discussed who to unify with, how to be unified, uh, and all the pleasures, the pleasantries, the goodness that comes from being unified. It's hard for us to be unified. Trust me, I understand, and I'm not going to berate any of you all and say that you don't. But what you will notice is that as much as we're pushing unity, don't forget the world pushes unity too. Every child's class that I've ever sat in and the classes that I remember taking, we're pushing unity, right? So the world is pushing unity. Evil is pushing unity, all right? Uh, you're not familiar with the concert, uh, but it's in Miami this past weekend, rolling loud, all right? Uh, we're trying to be, quote unquote, unified, going there, things like that. So the world wants unity. Academia wants unity. God wants unity. But all these things don't want the same type of unity. Uh, but if they don't all want the same type of unity, what does God's unity have that differentiates between the other acts of unity or uh, participation in unity that we can experience here on this earth? Family, I'd like for you to understand what you'll find right here in uh, 2 Corinthians is pretty cool, pretty simple. We have to recognize that things can be positive in the world. Things can be good in the world. Things can be even beneficial to your earthly self. 
but what can they not be or what what they can be and what they cannot be are both found in the word holy. If certain things are holy or certain things are righteous, it is determined by God. And you can only put it up to God's standard. If it's outside of those things, it usually can be determined by man's standards or by whatever grading tool and scale that you want to use. Open up with me and let's start right here in verse 14. All right, pay attention. It says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Bilal? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now pay attention, pay attention closely, all right? In the context that this is written, all right, I'm looking to extrapolate just a little bit so that we can get this message across that we are to be unified to Christians. We are to be unified to anything that is aligned with God's will, but we are to separate ourselves from anything that does not align with God's will. We are to separate ourselves from those things and separate ourselves to the living God. Let me make that a little bit more clear. When you come down to this verse 14 and it says, what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? All right. What was the law? The law, the letter of the law in Christ. What laws do we have? To love thy neighbor as we love ourselves, to go out into the world, the great commission. And then the law is not canceled out. We talked about this. It's actually fulfilled. In Christ, there is no gray area. So now you have to look at these comparisons and recognize what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness. Outside of lawlessness, there should only be righteousness. They're opposing factors. The, com the communion does light have with darkness. You don't really see that that much. Where light is, darkness is canceled out. Where there is a lot of darkness, light becomes canceled out. All right. What accord was Christ with Bilal? Now, you know about Bilal, Baal, all these other gods and things like that. It was an evil supernatural being at that period in time, for the most part, Satan. But what, what uh, fellowship does Christ have with this God? At this period in time, he's writing to the Corinthians and he needs them to understand that Christ doesn't have any fellowship, recollection, communion, interactivity going on with any of these opposing deities or beliefs. You want to see something else? It says, what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? None. There are no idols being worshipped in our temples uh, at that period in time, right? And there should be no idols worshipped even in our churches. We won't get to that today. I know for a fact that it gets a little tough when you're wanting to be unified with people because you're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're from a certain area. You have certain likes and dislikes, et cetera, et cetera. But we're called to be different. And when we say unequally yoked, we're not talking about so much your uh, co-workers or associates. We're talking about, imagine a yoke. A yoke is on my neck. And the same yoke has another space for somebody else's neck. When we work together, what the other person does affects the other person. If you try to go that way, I try to go this way, we're stuck. We can't go. I have to go the direction that you're going if you're the stronger one, or you have to go the direction I'm going if I'm the stronger one. Does this make a little bit more sense? You recognize what you're supposed to be doing, what your work is in Christ. So your coworkers or your fan, family members and friends, this scripture is not necessarily talking about that as much as it is talking about who are you doing your work with? Who are you producing fruit with? Does that make sense? Let me show you something. We're talking about producing fruit. In my high school class, we're studying about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit within us, the gift that comes from acknowledging that Christ is our Lord and Savior, putting him on in baptism and going out for the rest of our lives, walking with him. Our gift for that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. The one who Christ says is greater than he and will bring into remembrance everything that he has taught us. The fruits that come from living by the Holy Spirit, by being guided by the Holy Spirit, those fruits are found in Galatians. Let's turn there. Because if you've got to read about how God will actually dwell in us and walk amongst us, he'll be our God and we will be his people, then you got to understand 
what it looks like. There is a grading scale for you and others as to how they are uh, in relation with God. Now, can I gauge off your relationship with God by your sins? No, not at all. Can I gauge it off your presence in church? Not really. But what I can gauge it off of are these fruits that we all produce. The Bible in Galatians 5 talks about these fruits that the flesh produces, all right? But what we'll read right here is in verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against those things, there is no such law. Recognize what I'm telling you. You have the gift of the Holy Spirit and what's inside of you produces a fruit that is this. These are all different fruits. I'm seeing oranges, apples, uh, pears, plums. That's what I'm seeing when I'm thinking about what I'm producing. Am I producing gentleness? Am I producing kindness? If I have the spirit, I have more of an opportunity to do that. If I am unequally yoked, if I am interacting to a certain degree that my best interest, the best parts of me, my value, my worth is determined by the interest and the cares of this other individual and God is not in the forefront of their mind, then now I am unequally yoked. Now I am in a position where, what does the word say? I have a cord with Bilal. I'm trying to have communion with darkness. I'm trying to have fellowship with lawlessness. I am looking to uh, have an agreement with idols when I do not recognize nor atone for the fruits of the spirit. Let me show you though. That's what you're looking to have inside of you and you're praying and you're hoping and you're working with the runs around you so that they have that inside of them. They produce these types of fruit because what we're coming from and what the word is trying to protect us from is the idea that we can go back to what we used to come from, which is the flesh, or we could never come out of the flesh. Some men and women have never come out of the flesh. So the fruit that they produce may sometimes seem, look, or even feel like it's of the spirit, but it's totally of the flesh. And those of us who are of the spirit, what can actually happen is the things of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit can start to go bad, like bad fruit typically does when it's surrounded by bad fruit. So let me show you this and then we're almost out, okay? It says right here in verse 19, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Church, I love you with the love of the Lord. I need you to know and understand that we as God's children are called to have a unifying heart. The gift of the Holy Spirit is ours. That's our reward. That's going to help us do this. Have a unifying heart so that when people come to us, they can find sanctuary in us. They can find the fruits of the Spirit literally with us, from us. They can pick from our tree because we want to make sure that we are not being those of God who are literally uh, falling victim to not becoming holy or not fulfilling the holiness that he's gifted us with because we are unequally yoked. By all means, family, go out this week. Learn who you're dealing with. Do your best to separate from them. And it's not easy to separate physically from foolishness. So what you may have to do is separate mentally and spiritually. And then the physical will either come or will be uh, made easier. But understand what's being called of us. What's being asked of us is to separate from to then separate to. I'm separating from flesh, the world, foolishness, to then be separated to the spirit of God, the will of God. Church, I love you with the love of the Lord. Please, like I said, go out this week, check yourself, check your surroundings, check your friends and family members. Do not get uh, overzealous, though. Do this all out of love because the goal is not to uh, impede, spite, or pride upon somebody else, it is truly to create a unifying heart within ourselves so that we can fulfill the Great Commission. Amen. I love you with the love of the Lord. Go out and trust and believe, right? You trust in the promises of God, believe in his word, and things will be all right. That's what he talks about in his scriptures. I love you with the love of the Lord, family. Till next time, peace. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. Thou my best thought by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. 
Thou my wisdom and Thou my true word. I ever with Thee and Thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I Thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling and I with Thee one. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou my inheritance now and always. Thou and Thou only first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure Thou art. I, King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright and sun. Heart of my heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. Please bow with me. Dear God, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for the time that we have to worship you on this lovely Sunday morning. And we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you give us, for your son that died on the cross and allowed us to have a relationship with you. I pray that we would take your words and we would do them, we would do good in this world, and we would shine for you. In your name I pray, amen. Well, from the Franklin Church of Christ, we want to thank you for joining us today and pray that God blesses you with a wonderful week. And Lord willing, we'll see you next week. Until then, God bless you.